Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Mitch is behind the camera, as usual. Welcome to my shop. We're building a Romax. This is a Romax frame. Uh, we used to build them back in the late 80s, 86, 87, up till 90, and then it got, it got discontinued. So last uh, a segment, we got it all, all tacked up. It's the front triangle, but it's not really a triangle. It's a trapezoid, and that's a four-sided uh, structure with unequal lengths. And the thing about a trapezoid is that it's inherently unstable. So that's why I have a tack here and a tack here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to light my torch. I'm going to nickel silver around here. I'm going to fillet braze it, and then I'll do the bottom bracket do some filing and then we'll align the head tube with the seat tube, which won't be hard because there's one tack here and one tack here. That's the reason why. If you put a tack under here, very hard to align. You'd have to break the tack probably. So we're gonna light the torch and get going. I have my nickel silver rod and I'm gonna put a little bead all around here in between the head tube and the top tube. And it's easier to melt the 16th inch rod into, into the joint there rather than a 3.30 seconds rod. This is better and this is a slightly stronger rod. The head tube's a lot thicker, so the top tube wants to heat up a lot faster. Okay, and we are, we're all the way around. I'm gonna change rods now. I've got a 330 seconds bare bronze brazing rod. On, on the spot where I'm brazing, I want it to be horizontal because otherwise I'm fighting gravity. And gravity often wins. There we go, I think that's okay. I think I can file that up. Now we're working on the bottom bracket shell. I'm gonna nickel silver on the seat tube now. And when I do the fillet brazing, okay, see where the rod is right here? I, I normally draw, if this was frame building 101, I'd draw a red line there. You only, only want to fillet braze forward of the line. You nickel silver around the back, but you fillet braze forward of the line because if you fillet braze around the back, you can't put the chain stays on. You got all the fillet braze in the way and then you have to melt off the fillet braze and file it up and that's a pain. So only fillet braze forward of the center line of the seat tube. Got most of my heat going on the bottom bracket that the seat tube is pretty thin and it's the end of a tube. And I think I'm, yep, I'm around. switch rods. So I start at the side of the seat tube and I go around to the other side of the seat tube and then I go over top. I don't know if it really matters but that's just the sequence that I've done.
If you don't put in enough bronze in between the down tube and the seat tube, you can't get the cartridge roll in there. So it's hard to file up, you'd have to do it by hand. And the cone's really close now, I hope you can see that it's almost touching, because that's what you need to get the heat in there. If you hold the cone away, you'd have to have a much larger flame. Okay, I'm gonna say that's good. So you see how the, how the fillet braise is stopped on the side of the seat tube. If you bring it round, you can't put the, put the chain stays on. I'm gonna do some filing. I have my high-speed grinder. I have my spiral roll. You could call it a cartridge roll. It's like an emery cloth on a taper, glued. Let's get going. I've got my centering groove and now I edge out. I don't want to go on the steel at all. A little bit is okay, but not much. I've got the shape now, so I'm going to use the belt sander and I'm going to smooth it. In the belt sander, you need to ease in and ease off. And how that looks is like this. If you watch the belt, you can see how much pressure I'm putting on there. You see how I'm easing in, easing out. I'm, I'm turning my wrist as well and slowly coming around. So when I press down, it conforms to the radius and I overlap a bit because if I just if I only only press very lightly I'll, I'll get facets don't want that you want a nice smooth radius So this is the fine fingering. I've got 80 grit paper. It's an inch wide. So I'm putting pressure right, right on there because that's the spot where it's hard to get to with the belt sander. What you're looking for on a fillet braise is a nice even line that comes around. If the fillet braise goes in and out like that, You've got a high spot, you've got a low spot, etc. So you want to see a nice even band. And that looks okay. On the spiral roll, this spiral roll has to go in here. So it's the nose of the spiral roll that gets used a lot. And it basically wears out that part of the spiral roll. So you'll see. You can see how the, how the nose of the spiral rollers become quite worn. I've, I've tried to make this as smooth as I can because when I use the belt sander, I can only go from here round to the other side. I can't do any of this with the belt sander. This is all spiral roll. So, and a bit of hand polishing. If 
you do this all day, it's hard on your fingers. You get really sore hands. But I'm only doing one frame. If you were painting this, it wouldn't really matter because by the time you put on the primer, the top coat, the clear coat, it all blends in. But on this frame, I want to I want to just add a clear coat. So everything's going to show. I guess you call that a show bike. Okay. For right now, that's fine. Might come back to it later. I'm going to take a measurement of, of the bottom bracket shell because when I, I started building this frame, it was, it was made in a lathe that was parallel. Both the sides were the same. So if I measure the back now that's had no welding and no, and no brazing on it, we're going to set it to zero doesn't matter the size. There we go. I'm going to set that to zero. Now we'll check the other side because I want to show you something. Do you see how it's minus nine and a half thou? What that means is all the brazing has narrowed the bottom bracket shell. It's no longer parallel. It's coming in. So if you were to check the alignment on a surface table, it wouldn't be accurate because these faces aren't accurate. So the way you would do it, if you wanted to do it on a surface table, is to face and chase the bottom bracket at this stage. And I don't believe that's a good thing to do because you're making it a little narrower. And then at the end of the build, when the chain stays are on, you have to face and chase it again. That's why this gauge is so handy because I'm assuming and I think it's a good assumption that it's coming evenly because the braze is right in the middle and the braze is even. So using this, I can build the frame in alignment. If I was checking on a big surface table, I couldn't do that as easily. So let's just see what we got here. Okay, that's touching right there. And we pull it over this side. So we've got a space of about a millimeter or so. That's really close. So this doesn't have to come very much at all. So just a little bit. There we go. So there's a little bit of a gap there. And there's a little bit. Of, that's so close that for this stage of the alignment, that's fine because after the stays get brazed on, facing and chasing, it all happens again. We'll do the seat tube now and see what's up with that. Okay, small gap. Big gap, wow. That's, whoops. So this one's going to come this way. And seat tubes, for whatever reason, they're off and out, so it's not a, not a big deal in my mind. And the seat too, because it's inch and an eighth, it's easier to pull than the inch and a quarter. So two hands. Got a little gap there. Well, that's close enough for this stage. If it's within a millimeter, that's fine. So, okay, so this, Oh, we, we checked the down tube. If we pull the seat tube, we always check the down tube again. So, got a tiny gap there. That's good. Okay, so the, and so the triangle is aligned right now. So what, what's the next stage is to align the, the head tube with the seat tube. So we'll go over to the surface table and we'll check that. At the alignment table now, this is the head tube alignment, whatever we're going to call it. So I put in the cone, slide it down. There's a ramp here. When I pull these levers apart, it locks. 
now this seat tube has a, a long taper on it, so I have to be off the taper. And I think I'm pretty good there. So you can see up here, there's a gap, but that's okay. Can you see there's a gap there? So what I need to do is to align this. So what I've found is if I weld this or I fillet braze it and I go in, in this direction like that, it always pulls this way, always. If I braze the other way, it'll go the opposite way. So I'm right-handed, I go from right to left. So I need a gap under here and I don't have a gap under here yet, so I have to move it more. And when me and the guys were building all those frames, all those Brody bikes, this is the same process that every frame went through. And I think it's a good process. Every frame builder has their own way of doing stuff. So if you talk to another frame builder, they'll say, no, I don't do it that way. But this is what worked for all those years. There, okay, see that? See that movement there? I've got a little bit of a gap under this side. So I'm going to take it off the surface table very carefully because it's easy to move at this stage. It's not locked in that position. I'm going to flux it up and then I've got, I've got the TIG tack right there. So I'm going to start nickel silvering it on the opposite side because then that locks it. It wouldn't be smart to start right here always start opposite the existing tack. So the head tube's gonna take more heat. I can even put heat inside the head tube. And I've still got the heat aiming towards the head tube just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so I have to align it. It's, uh, it needs to go the same way again. So I didn't leave enough space. I, I put gloves on here because if the tic tac ever breaks, you got a sharp edge. So I'm just being careful. So that's basically level now but I want a, tiny, want a tiny little space here because when I braise this one, it's gonna pull down just a touch. There we go. See how I can move it just a tiny little bit? That's what I want. So that's basically a line. That didn't take a whole lot of work. In this part right here, that's the hardest part to do because on the down tube, it's been ovalized. So this is much more of a flat spot here. This one here, it's got, a, it's got an arc because it's a round tube. But when you ovalize a tube, there's a section on the side that's flat. That's harder to do. That's the part on the side there that I need to get. See, you know, it comes out looking quite nice. Now, you, now you'll really be able to see the pinhole. Not very proud of my pinhole. I'm told that even the really good frame builders get pinholes sometimes. When I was working for Rocky and I was spray painting a lot of Ritchie frames, even Tom Ritchie had a couple pinholes. Mostly his frames are really, really well made. 
but he did get the occasional pinhole. Yeah, it's been 30 years, but I am quite excited about building myself a Romax frame. I don't know if you can tell. I always did have a soft spot for the Romax and to actually make a frame that has the seat tube extension. Haven't done that in a very long time. So that I got a top tube that's really thin, so it heats up quite a bit faster than the seat tube extension. Okay. If you're working on a frame and you've just and you've just done some brazing, you always have to remember what's hot because if you go grab that that's not a good thing oh there's a gap so this is hot but I can put in a tube a rod and that, that's going to give me extra leverage anyway so So I'm touching the table there. That's good for me. I'm gonna do all old, old style pinch lugs. Look how, look how thick and heavy these are. This is kind of a sample here. And you can see here how this one didn't get used on a frame. See how it's, you see how it's wider here and narrower there. This groove should be in the middle so we're going to do that and then also on the back where it gets mited for the seat tube extension i think the cut was a little bit deep it's okay but we're going to make it so it just it doesn't go quite through the hole and i'll show you how we're going to measure that how deep it is and then we'll set up the mill using a digital readout what it looks like and that's not a, a perfect finish but that's acceptable could use a little bit of emery cloth in there fine so now I have to hold this in the vise but this has to be straight up and down so I've got a little square so I need to do a couple things I need to hold this to the edge of the vise with one hand or two and then also hold that on the other side. You see how I'm holding it? That's how I'm holding it. One, one thumb and one finger. If I measure what the wall thickness is, it's 192. So if I, if I touch the whole saw and go in 180, we're leaving a few thou there. So let's go 180. Okay, that's just touching. So now on the X we'll go 180. And this is, that's the zero. So that's what it looks like. You just have to take off the burr. The whole saw made a really nice cut and do a little bit of sanding and then uh, I'll braze that on. I'll actually nickel silver it on. I have a very high tech tool here. This is basically what we used to use and that sits on there like that. I'm gonna flux it up and then this goes like that. And then we, we take a little piece of plate and, and we put the plate on the top and we bring the pinch lug back so it's lined up. That's how we set this up. 
There you go. Now it's tacked. Looks level. So now I can take this off. Can you see it working around? Because it is. Okay, that looks smooth. We're gonna do some silver soldering. I got silver solder flux. These are the brazons. These are the water bottle brazons. So I put a little bit of flux on there first. Put the water bottle bosses in. And you have to be very careful not to get flux in the threads because once this flux hardens up, you can soak it, but it's hard to get off. If you don't have anything to hold the bosses, they can go at an angle. See how much I can move them? They'll go at an angle. So this is the holder. You see how it's offset? It goes that way. It does not go that way. So it fits in because it's the same spacing two and a half inches and then you need to angle the frame a little bit so that this so that gravity holds this down it's a very small flame and i hold the flame very very close and what i like to do is to put a little bit of a blob on each side and then i just flow it round. i'll do a little bit of a preheat on the fixture because that acts as a little bit of a heat sink so there's my preheat. So here's my silver soldering. So look how close I'm holding it. There we go. See how fast that is? Can you see the little bit of silver solder there? And that's all you need on one end. And I'll do the same on the other side. So I've got a little bit on each end. Then I float it round. I'm actually resting the torch on the tube. Yeah, that's done. I love how this stuff flows if you do it right. It's very satisfying. Okay, there. So there's no heat stain on either one. Well, the, okay, that's not quite, there's a hint here. Can you see the hint? That's all it is, it's a hint. And out of the archives, I didn't make this. Someone working for me, I don't know who made this, and it's made of a collection of, I don't know, all sorts of bits and pieces. And how it works is like this. You put the braze on on this, and then it sits at the right angle. How much of a space are you needing? We usually go either three fingers or four fingers. So that looks, that looks about right. If it's too close to the head tube, it doesn't look good and the cable tends to kink more. That's about the right amount of space. So we'll add flux and do some more silver soldering. And that's it. It's very quick. And I don't see a heat stain there either. So seat tube slot. I like to do them an inch and an eighth long and then add the hole on top of that. So there's inch and an eighth. So hmm. Let me measure this one. I guess we used to make the slot. Look at that. Way longer. Okay, we're gonna make the slot the same length as this. There we go. That's an inch and seven sixteenths, a lot longer. This is going to help to set the height. There should be an equal amount on either side when I, when I wiggle. And to me, that looks right.
we have a slot. Looks like it's in the middle. It looks like it's straight. So let's go drill a hole. And I say that's a good spot right there. It's not a very big hole. It just stops the slot from spreading. So there's no stress riser there. This is just a hacksaw blade, but I don't have much to take out. And that's through. And then I've got a diamond file. It looks very smooth, but it actually cuts very, very nicely. So I want the slot to go down and then and go into the hole. Nice straight slot, nothing nothing tapered or anything. That looks fine. There we go. One, one pinch lug, one slot, one hole. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. See you next time.